Brian Chan, who's from uh, Kamloops, British Columbia, a person I've known for over 30 years, and been involved with uh, uh, stillwater fishing. I've had a chance to uh, fish with him. I've had a chance to be uh, many places and, and lectures, but I, there isn't anybody I hold more respect for understanding the insect coronament, which is the heart and soul of stillwater fishing. Something that it, it, it's really uh, compared to trout fishing on a screen. It's very much uh, like a spring creek with the, in, the, the insects that may be the same, the booming ollies, uh, the, the insects that we have a lot of, and intricacies of having to fish those are the same thing with coronamids. Maybe even more because the depth is such important. But we're going to produce, uh, well, we already produced, but we're going to show you uh, Brian Chan's uh, fly tying and uh, uh, technique tape that he uses with his flies. Uh, we're going to go through each fly, uh, and uh, they'll be there for you to uh, tie from and get to know Brian. Brian, uh, uh, we re really, really had some fun, fun times together and caught a lot of big fish. Anyway, Brian will, will explain this. I'll be with him, and we're, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, might mention to you, uh, by the way, he and Phil Rowley's tapes were probably some of my biggest selling uh, DVDs. And I put together uh, on eBay uh, 12 the, uh, Stillwater tapes for $20. It's amazing. There's some people maybe you never heard of. Denny Richards is in there. Uh, uh, Kelly, uh, Gallup, just a lot of people that are involved with Stillwater, some Canadians that maybe you haven't heard of. But uh, if you want to keep these, I know you can get it off my channel, but if you want to keep these for prosperity, you'll always have them. You don't have to worry about downloads, and it'll be right there. This is essentially what it cost me to produce so. But I want to have them in your hands. Uh, one of the big things that I do is work a volunteer as soon as this pandemic's over back with uh, Project Healing Water. I've got books and DVDs. This will help. Anyway, thank you very much and on with Brian Chan. Bombers. I came to the lake yesterday and they were talking about there's bombers over there. Well, you know, there's all kinds of connotation to bombers. I'm looking for bird bombing. I'm looking for big fish cruising. And I get over there and say, where's the bombers? And they go, right here, right here. And it's like an insect. You betcha. It's the great big, the biggest of the chronomid species. We call them bombers. They're, they're big enough. They look like airplane bombers as they're taking off after they emerge or if the females are coming back to lay eggs. And so we're talking about uh, flies, uh, uh, pupil patterns that mm -hmm. can be in excess of three quarters of an inch in length, where like 10 3x, eight, even 8 3x hooks. These are, you know, a lot of stream fishing when we're fishing midgets are small, 18, 20, 22s. Right. Uh, you know, I, I'm a little challenged getting the, the leader through the eye of that hook that small. So, I, you know, 10 3x is a lot easier. <laughs> well, I like maroon. Now, I'm a big red or maroon, whatever you want to call it, fan. I, I don't know why you, you mentioned hemoglobin. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. But uh, there's red on, our, our probably number one fly that our guides use is a red-bodied tarantula. Red, bright red. There you go. I don't go. know why. Yeah. Nothing it's, in it, nature. <laughs> no, not in nature's that color, but it just it seems to trigger. It seems to work. Yeah. So this is a coronamid. Uh, coronamid pupil pattern, uh, one of our bigger bomber patterns. Uh, and it's a good color combination with, with the maroon body and then the silver and uh, red, copper wire rib. For those of you that, of course, obviously go to BC and Alberta and the other Canadian lakes, you're going to encounter these bigger uh, midges. You can say, wait a minute, does this happen in the U.S.? Well, you know, you fish Washington and Oregon. That's right, and then they're there too. In Idaho, and I mean, they're there. So you want to learn this pattern, so let's get started. There's no question one of the most interesting and most challenging w ways to fly fish in still waters is using chronomid or midge pupil patterns. 
not only is it it's fun because you have to determine what size and color are emerging before the fish get full feeding on the pupa and are off digesting the food for the rest of the day. So size and color is critical. And unlike rivers, chronomids in, in still waters can grow quite large because they're, they're such nutrient rich sinks. And we're very fortunate that in man, many Western still waters in particular, the chronomids or midges can get quite large. So it's not uncommon to be fishing chronomid pupil patterns that are tied on hooks as big as 10 3x, a number 10 through extra long shank hook. We call them bombers. When I, where I come from in Campbell's British Columbia, we call them bombers. They're so big, they look like bomber airplanes flying through the water. And, and we love to see that because they're easier to tie. They're a big food source and fish really chow down on them. And fish get very big feeding on chronomid pupa. So I'm gonna demonstrate the maroon chronomid bomber pattern that I tie. It uses the Stillwater Solutions mid-stretch floss in the maroon. Maroon is an excellent color in general for a chronomid pattern. So I'm using, on this particular fly, I'm using a slightly curved shank nymph hook, a number 10, three extra long. I've got a 764 white metal bead, a super white bead head and that's gonna be the gills, plus add some weight to the fly. I'm using a dot tying thread, and I'm just gonna lay down a base, and also use the fly tying thread to build up a bit of a taper to the body of the pupa. So this is gonna look like a huge fly, but uh, there are lots of lakes uh, that you'll see the, the chronomid or midge pupa this large in real life, so they're a real real treat to fish. A little different than fishing 18s and 22s on a river. We can actually see these flies to tie them on. So I've got a bit of a taper to the fly now. The rib on this fly is going to be two strands of wire, one red copper wire and one silver wire. So I'm just going to line those two strands up and I'm just going to tie them in at the bend of the hook. And then we're gonna take our mid stress stretch floss, which is nice and elastic, and I'm gonna tie it in just behind the bead. So cinch your tire down tight and then stretch it out and lay it down. Just gonna use it to build up the body a bit. So it's stretched out. Bring the fly tying thread to the bead again, and then I'm gonna take the body material and just carefully form a body bringing it all the way up to the bead. Mid stretch floss comes in a lot of different colors and uh, a lot of the colors represent colors of the pupa that you'll actually see at lakes. So it's a great material to tie a lot of different colors of chronomid pupa. And again we're tied it under pressure stretching on it so make sure you you cinch down with your tying thread behind it and in front of it before cutting it off. Then we're going to take our two strands of wire. I'm going to take a couple turns as for a tag and then I'm going to wind up to the eye of the hook. And now the, the Two strands of wire don't have to be right next to each other. And what we're doing is we're trying to further the wire is further, the red wire is further accenting the maroony, maroony red coloration. The silver wire is providing that hint of gas bubble that's trapped under the abdomen and thorax of the fly. So now we've got our rib down, we're just going to trim it off. And then I'm going to take my tying thread and cover a little bit of the, of the uh, white bead just to reduce the, the brightness just a bit. Like so, I've covered about a third of the bead. And then I'm just going to finish the fly off with the whip finisher. 
So there you have the maroon chronomid bomber. Simple pattern to dive.